The works of visual artists can play a huge role in the way people and issues are perceived in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Tonight, our Bob DeCastro profiles a successful Southern California cartoonist who's using the power of the pen and pencil to fight for his community. Yeah, he, he can't shut me up. Sorry. <laughs> You can only fit so many words in a cartoon, but make no mistake, these ones deliver powerful messages. The artist turned activist behind them has plenty to say about his work. I want people to get is that we should all be involved, you know, one way or another. The bare minimum would be read the news, watch the news. Knowing what's going on around you is half the battle, I think, you know, because that way people can't take advantage of you. Uh, people can't take advantage of your town, your family, your friends. Armed with a pen and pencil, Lalo Alcaraz has been advocating his point of view for decades. The 57-year-old two-time Pulitzer finalist has become a leading figure in the Chicano movement since he began political cartooning in the early 90s. Alcaraz grew up in an artistic family inspired by his mother. From her, I got my smart alecky attitude, which is a very Mexican thing. It's like laugh at the tragedy around you. An influence from his being raised along the Mexican border. Alcaraz was stunned by the lack of representation of people of color in mainstream media. And so that gave me a desire to create my own images of reflecting the actual world that I lived in. And ever since I've done that, represent the border, represent family, represent immigrants uh, specifically. That sense of duty to the Latinx community can be seen in countless other projects, from his popular politically themed comic La Cucaracha, to his work as a producer and writer on Fox's animated show Border Town. In 2013, when Disney tried to trademark the phrase Dia de los Muertos for its upcoming film, Alcaraz helped lead a protest campaign which eventually led to the company abandoning the idea. The movie was called Coco instead, and Alcaraz was hired as a cultural consultant. It's a movie that I'm proud to put my name on and the community loves it and it's the number one movie of all time in Mexico. It's the one night of the year our ancestors can come visit us. I think that was a real pivotal moment in Hollywood. I'm happy it happened because it, it was a demarcation. It's like you know, we're out here. Through the COVID-19 pandemic, Alcaraz used his cartoons to combat vaccine hesitancy with a focus on farm workers in the Central Valley. They deserve good information. They deserve good health care and obviously good working conditions. But if we can convince people to take care of themselves and their families, why not fight misinformation with good information? We all have to c come together. And, and take care of each other. Taking care of one another, something he hopes the youth take to heart. I hope that's what people see that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to nudge you into stepping up, you know, I'm doing something. We know that minority culture is really U.S. culture. It's at the core of American culture, but it's not acknowledged. But I think that this next generation is so empowered with technology and everything. I hope that, you know, they really spread it far and wide nudge in i think he's made his mark right and it's amazing and and the the power of the cartoon has been so influential throughout our history and it's pretty amazing to see proof that we all have a voice we're going to be doing a lot more with hispanic heritage month coming up